Welcome back, tribe. Today, what I want to talk to you about is the value of rest. We say work hard, play hard. Well, part of that is always making sure that you take that break. Let's get to it. Yo, and what's up, tribe? Welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about how you can make rest work for you. You know, as Americans, we have one of the highest GDPs in the world. And even when you look at GDP per person, it's really there. We do work a lot. And because we work a lot, sometimes we don't rest as much as we should, which means we're not working as efficiently. Hey, like Scrooge McDuck had always been saying, work smarter, not harder. And part of working smarter is making sure that you are taking the appropriate amount of rest. So what does that mean? So what I want to use as an analogy is athletes. Athletes will often use what's called periodization when they're going out to perform. They understand and their doctors and their trainers all understand that if you build up and then take a rest, the muscles are going to be stronger. So your muscles are always getting stronger when you're resting. So as someone who's done triathlon and, and marathon, we knew that we would do three or four weeks of progressively increased activity and then take a week off. And that's where you would really see those gains. We would never work hard right before a race. And the same thing can apply to when you're studying, when you're getting work done, uh, whatever. So what does that rest look like? Well, a few tips for you. First of all, let's think big picture. I have a friend. She apparently has about 700 plus hours of personal time that she has not taken. Well, she is having some trouble in her work and the troubles are basically she's getting frustrated. Well, she hasn't really taken an appropriate rest. So one of those things that you can do is take those vacations. That's the whole point of me posting those punctuation videos showing you that you need to take some time to just give yourself a bit of a break. So make sure you are taking those vacations. Diving in a little bit more focused, are you really taking your weekends for your weekends? Are you shutting your email off, putting it aside unless you're in some situation where you need to be on call. Even if you're on call, are you asking for weekends where you're not on call? Putting your weekends aside for you, for your family, for your loved ones, for your friends is going to be real important to make sure that you come into that next week, that you don't have a case of the Mondays, that you're ready to hit Monday and you're ready to hit it hard. Think about it. The person who's tired because they've been working over the weekend, well, when they go into their Monday, if they're still tired, they're not going to be as efficient. Now, sometimes, like me, I do work over the weekends, but even still, I very much vary what I'm doing. I may be focused on some of my outside activities like these videos uh, versus during the week when I'm focused in on my students and my teaching and my research. So still, those weekends are mine and I defend them vigorously. Just like those weekends, are you defending your evening times? Are you trying to type out emails at night? I gotta be honest with you, I'm not impressed when I get emails from individuals, from professionals in the evening. It tells me that they don't know how to turn off. So I don't send emails, I, and if I absolutely have to, sometimes I'll actually put a timer on it so that it doesn't send it until the morning because realistically that time should be yours and I don't wanna create the perception that I think it's acceptable to, to be working in the evening, especially for my students. I, you know, I will end an email chain with a student if I happen to start it and I'm talking about my student workers, you know, shut the email down. You know, you can reply to this in the morning. And generally speaking, most of the time you actually can. Okay, talk big picture vacation, talked about weekends, talked about your evenings. Now let's talk about your day. Are you meditating? And by meditation, I mean just even if you take five minutes to clear your headspace, a five minute mindfulness meditation, even a one minute mindfulness meditation can help you learn and gain focus throughout the day. I highly encourage it. There will be a video later in the series on how to do it. Uh, but what you can do with those little mindfulness meditations is really clear your head. You may actually want to get out of the office, go for a little walk, just not think about anything at work, whether it's bothering you or troubling you, or, or even if you're you know at a high point, just give yourself a bit of a break. I encourage you to go outside, get a little bit of sunlight. Uh, that will really help restore your brain function, restore and gain focus throughout that entire day. 
thinking about that, your lunch breaks. Are you taking your lunch breaks at your desk or are you going out to the break room, having some good social discussions with your coworkers that have nothing to do with work? That's really gonna help you focus when you do get back to your desk. And last but not least, what about when you're actually turning everything off? Are you getting the right amount of sleep? Rest is important for that as well. Understand how you sleep and understand how you can make sleep work for you. For me, there's two ways that I do that. Either I get a good solid probably seven hours or eight hours a night, or there are some times when I will do six hours a night and I'll work out hard in the morning and then I'll get another two hours later. And what that does is it allows me to capitalize on the morning. Uh, it's a biphasic approach, so I'm still getting the appropriate amount of sleep and I'm ready to hit that afternoon with gusto, with energy, with everything that I've got. So make sure you're getting good quality sleep. You're putting your phone away, preferably not at your bed stand or your nightstand. You're finding a good way of going down at the end of the night. You're not having caffeine in the afternoon. All this stuff can help you have a great restful sleep. And when you wake up in the next day, you're not going to have the brain fog associated with poor sleep. Especially important if you easily wake up as opposed to jarring yourself out of a deep, deep sleep. There are alarm clocks that can do that for you, like sun rise alarm clocks. All right, Tribe, well, I hope this video is of value to you. If you liked it, click that like bell. If you haven't yet, subscribe, grab that notification bell and give it a whack. And I'm looking forward to seeing you guys every Monday. Hopefully now you're gonna be rested when you watch these videos. And as always, I hope you're better off today than you were yesterday. And I'm looking forward to you being better off tomorrow than you are today. Take care.